All right. Uh, God bless you, brothers and sisters. I pray that you all are having a wonderful time, a wonderful day, and that I hope that you had a wonderful holiday with your friends and family. I know some of you went out and blew up some fireworks and, and were around your family, and I hope that it was awesome. I really, really do. Um, I have something I want to share with you all. It's a dream, and it's, um, it's a hope that it impacts you the way that it has impacted me and the significance of it. Um, before we start, we always pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Holy Spirit, I pray that you use me this day. Guide me, Father. I pray that the Holy Spirit be a filter between me and my brothers and sisters in Christ. And whatever words are spoken are the words of truth, the words of love, the words of joy, the words of peace, and that be able to cut through any, any form of darkness darkness on the other end that my brothers and sisters are dealing with. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, so God bless you guys. This is a dream that I had um, not too long ago, I would say maybe a week or two, and um, I did not write this dream down. It's just, it's almost like it's etched in my spirit. Every time I think about this dream, I just, I, I have pictures of images, and then I get downloaded with information about what this dream actually meant. And Every day I think about this dream or it comes to me randomly, it brings even more and more and more understanding. And so it's just like it's an ever flowing living dream within me now. You know, and so it's just like every time I think about it, something else comes in. Right when I thought I had the understanding of what this dream meant, another one was poured onto me. And this one I really want to share this part of the understanding of this dream with you all. So I'm just gonna go straight into it. All right, um, in this dream, um, I went to sleep and I woke up in a, it looked like a white room. And I, it, it was almost like I was out of body. I didn't, my body was not there, but there was a man, uh, or what I thought was a man. It was a person. I'm just going to say that. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman because they were kneeling down and they uh, had clasped their hands together like they, they were praying. And so... My body was floating around them, and I still could not make up the, their face or who they were. It was almost like they were multi-race, multi-person, and they, it was like they didn't, they were neither male nor female. They were just an individual praying. And as I was looking at this individual praying, and it's 422, see God is good. As I was looking at this individual praying, I realized that um, as they were praying, different enemies were coming up against them. And it was like these, um, it was like people at work. It was like frenemies. It was um, uh, spiritual issues and problems, financial issues were surrounding this individual. And they continued to pray. They did not break in their prayer. They continued to do it. And as they uh, dove deeper into into the, into the spirit of what they were praying for, I saw a double image laid on top of them. So it was like the person was praying, but then another person showed up and was praying with them. And when I saw this person praying, I immediately felt it within myself. I was like, is that the Lord? And then that's when it was like, it shifted. And I turned and I saw this person and then it was, it was, it was an ever-changing person. It was a male that was praying for the people at his job. It was a female praying for her family. It was a another guy praying against an enemy. It was a woman praying for her finances. It was a, another man praying for a church. It was a woman praying for somebody to be healed. It was an ever-changing, quick image of a person. But what was steady, what was steady in this image was Jesus. Jesus never moved. He was on his knees within these people praying with them. He was over them as a second skin, as a second image. And within these people, Jesus was there. And the, and the more they prayed, the stronger they prayed, the bigger God got. And so then I came and I was like, again, my body was not there. I was going around this individual now knowing that it was multiple people praying at one time in and out and Jesus was the constant when I came around to the front of this person and they looked up I saw my face I saw my face praying and I saw Jesus's face over my face praying and then that's when I made eye contact with myself and I made eye contact with the Lord and when I made this eye contact 
that's when I was able to see from the perspective of the individual praying. And I looked up and I saw that the boss that I was praying for, I saw Pontius Pilate. And then um, as I was praying against an enemy, I saw, or when I was praying against and for an enemy, I saw demons. And then when I, and then I saw Pharisees. And then when I was praying for my family and my friends, I saw the world. And I, I realized that I was overlaying, like I was seeing what Jesus was seeing. And I was going through my personal issues and I was seeing that in Jesus' time. Then I saw, um, then I was snatched out of the body and I saw Pontius Pilate talking with Jesus. And I saw Jesus being whipped and, the, and he, like his body had then encased the person that was praying and he was being whipped and tormented over top of the individual praying. So whatever blows that this person would have received, Jesus received the blows. Jesus received the, the heresy, the hate, the anger, the depression, all of it Jesus received. He was absorbing all of it as this individual was praying. Then I saw... It was like doors had opened in this white room and these, these huge demons had came out and they were coming to attack and kill the individual that Jesus was absorbing the blows for. And when they tried to take a deathly blow, like literally they pulled, which looked like a sword, out to kill this person, to kill the me, to kill the you, to kill the everyone that was submitting themselves to Jesus and allowing Jesus to over, to, to protect them. The enemy tried to kill that person, and that's when, um, when they went in for the final blow to do that, that's when an angel, huge, I, I want to say like 10 feet, I want, like the first thing that came to my mind was nine and a half, but I want to say like 10, because I, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, it was a huge angel, and this angel had on, um, yes, a white robe and everything, but it had silver plating throughout its, um, throughout its body. And it had this staff. I wish I could. I'm going to try to. Sorry, you guys. I really wanted to try to draw it. And I quickly did um, just a weird staff. But it was a huge staff. And the staff was um, it was made of marble. And it had a, a murky white stone right here. And it just like, you know, it started off as this huge part at the top and then it was like you know the pole that it held but even the pole was like at least two to feet it, it, it was almost like a foot in circumference or, or two feet like the hands of the of the angel was so big but it took this staff and it and it just pushed back the enemy and pushed him off and knocked him back and then more angels showed up it was almost like just two more compared to the army of the enemy that was trying to kill the us within and uh, and trying to do the final blow towards the Jesus or our Jesus that was covering us and to see that it was like I got the understanding that we will go through trials and tribulations and when we kneel down and we submit ourselves to Jesus Jesus's trials and tribulations that he went through he then absorbs what we have what we are going through and he overtakes that is no longer our problem is no longer our battle our issue Jesus prayer is sufficient enough for us and then the enemy who wants to still kill and destroy us will not be able to he cannot deliver a final blow against us just like with Job Job went through so much if anything he went through more than, than um, the disciples themselves, uh, you know, because he lost all of his family, lost all of respect. He was tortured mentally, physically, but he did not die. The enemy could not do the final blow and God would not allow that. And by God's grace, we are still here, still pushing and still going. So it was like right when I saw that, I saw God's, I, I saw God's will be done, right? And so when I woke up, I was I was shaking. I was like, what did I just witness? And this dream still has so much more to it. And I, like, I really wish that I could, I had took notes and wrote down so much more, but it's just like, I, I witnessed through Jesus's eyes, I witnessed him talking to Pontius Pilate and telling him he is the truth and this is the way. I saw him communing with the Pharisees and trying to teach them the right way. I saw him go through the whips on his back and him bleeding out and every whip 
had like a, a like a person's name etched in his blood that was being poured out and um every sickness was like it it was it was like it was it was us that was bleeding from him i don't know how to explain it it was like he was he was just taking on our problems and i saw him crucified through his eyes as i was praying just like each and every other individual that was praying in that white room were in jesus's shoes or jesus was in their shoes they were one we are one jesus is within us and so i don't know how much i could i, I want to stress that point so much like no matter what you're going through god is with you and so um the main thing I wanted to share with you all also was when uh, Jesus had went to the Garden of the Gethsemane, he prayed for us. And let me see. Um, I want to read his prayer to you all. So let me go ahead and grab it. All right, God bless you, brothers and sisters. So here's the scripture. It is uh, John chapter 17. This is the prayer that Jesus prayed for us. Okay, so... Here I go. Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thou son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is e life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self and with the, and with the glory which I have with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou givest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I come out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through the uh, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, and that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that givest me, I kept. I have kept, and none I have none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from all evil, or keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Oh, Jesus. That they, that they all may be one as thou Father are in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou givest me I have given them, that they may be one, as, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may but may, <laughs> that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me, Father. I, Father, I will, Father, I will that they also that thou hast given me. Be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. 
which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So brothers and sisters, Jesus said it better. <laughs> the whole dream is him being in us against the world. He is protecting us. He loves us. And we will see his glory. And some of us have seen it made manifest when we received him into our hearts. <sighs> and the breath of life that he gave us. I just give glory to God and I love that he loved us first that we may love him. Guys, I'm not the best person to explain things, but I pray that you receive this word and that you go and read the words of God for yourself and that you just get to know that he loves you so much. All right, so God bless you guys and sorry for crying. Um, God bless you guys. Have a great day.